Hey, what's happening, you guys? This is your boy, Creative D. Will, your everyday creative dad. Man, it is a great Thursday morning. I just finished the workout, and I am pumped. So, I wanted to do a video. I was in the gym. I was just like, yo, you know what? I'm going to show people how I sample inside the machine. I know you got all the other ways, like Jay Dillas, and the people do all the dialing in and all the other stuff for the sample. But for me, that don't work. I don't like all that. I like to do it the easy, simple way. So, I'm going to show you guys my number one way that I sample inside the machine. Plus, there's various ways to do it you can find videos on youtube on how to do other ways but this is my top number one way that i love to sample inside the machine plus also 80 percent of y'all ain't subscribed to this channel so please do me a favor go down and hit that like button hit that subscribe button thing down there and below and, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing please help your boy out help the channel out all right so you guys know what time it is let's dive in and let's get creative Hi, right, you guys. So welcome back. As you can see, I have an instance of machine pulled up here. And uh, over here in my library, I have um, a few samples from the somatic sample pack that we're going to go through. I have one already loaded, but I'm going to see if there's any more that I actually like more than this sample. But we're just going to go through these samples and kind of figure out which one we want to work with. And I'm going to show you guys how I chop samples inside the machine. Other people might prefer a different way. So if you like this method, then hit that thumbs up because we about to dive in, baby. All right, here we go. So, all right, let's see. I like this. We're gonna do a guitar sample. To stop your samples, the number one thing you need to know is hit shift and mute. Like, because sometimes these samples, they just keep going and going and going and the junk gets annoying. So shift, mute, stop a sample from playing. That's called the choke. Choke a sample. I'm gonna choke this sample. All right, boom. So I got this this sample loaded up. This guitar sample it sounds dope. Some of these in the in the machine library, it gives you uh, the tempo like 130 BPM and or A minor the key. Some of these libraries that you have, Somatics does. So that's why I, I really really like them. So if you should go check them out. Uh, in the machine library, these loops as well, it gives you the tempo and the key is right next to it. So that's very important when chopping samples if you're trying to repitch the sample and all that other good stuff. All right, so now that I got it, it loaded up. Whenever you load a sample, it loads up under this sampler, right? And that's dope because that's how that's what we're gonna use to chop a sample. To access the sampler, the actual sampler module, then what you wanna come over here is hit this little wave file right here. And it gives you different ways that you can chop a sample. You come down to slice, and down here is the mode. So we have detect, split, grid, manual. Right, and I already got auto snap on and all that good stuff. You can turn auto snap off and what it does, it won't snap to the grid. You can move these lines and everything. So, uh, or move the, 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 the samples, uh, not to the grid, but uh, not the, the slices to the grid. Anyway, all right, so now that we got an idea how to do that, I wanna show you guys um, my method on what I do. Um, I like to take my sample and convert it to the project tempo. So as you can see that this sample is, let's see what, what the sample is in. It is 128 BPM in G minor. Now, if I if I play this sample, boom, I'm gonna play it real quick so you guys can see. And now I'm gonna turn on the metronome. You can hear how that is not in time with my actual project. Now I wanna change that. So in order to do that, what I do is I come over here to internal and I go to audio. You can also access it by, but, but, but we're gonna go back here and we're gonna change it back from audio to sample so I can show you guys how to do it on the hardware as well. So you come over here back to sampler engine and let me change it down to the GH5 top down view, boom. And in here, all you do is just click on, if you're on the machine or mach the MK3 or the machine plus, you just click on, make sure you're in sounds, boom. And then you click on sampler and then you go down here to audio. Now it switched it from a actual, um, from an actual uh, uh, sampler engine to audio engine. And I'm gonna show you why this is very important. Now you can see that it automatically detected the, uh, the, the tempo and everything like that of this sample. And that's important because I got this to stretch. I want to, I want to do it to stretch and it stretches this sample to my project tempo. Now I want to come over here and I want to play it and see if it's in line with my tempo. So 
So, all right. So I got that. Now I can hear that it's not in line with my um, project tempo. But the fact that I know that this is in 128 BPM, you can go and tempo tap it to see exactly the tempo before you uh, uh, go to the audio engine. Just keep it as a sampler and hit tempo tap. And then you can figure out what the tempo of the sample is. Right. So I know that it's 128. So I want to come over here and change this to 128. One, two, eight. Boom. And now this sample should be scratched perfectly to my tempo, my project. All right, so now you can hear that that is scratched perfectly to my sample. Now I want to resample this audio that I've actually scratched and changed the tempo of. So now I changed the tempo of the sample. Now I want to I want to sample that actual um, uh, 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 sample. I don't know if that makes sense. Hope you guys are following me, but it's gonna get, it's it's gonna make sense. All right, so how to do that is I'll come over here. Are right, you guys, as I was watching this, I saw that you guys could not see what I was doing when it when it came to actually dragging the sample and resampling. So I had to interrupt the video because my my camera was in the way. So uh, the button that you want to press is this button right here to the right. It's like a little wave line. And you just want to hold that button down and make sure you keep it held down. Boom. And then drag and drop it to um, pad over here. So that's pretty much it. You guys back to the video. Now I can delete this because now I have a sample that's scratched perfectly to my um in four bars to my um project. So now I want to come over here and I want to change this from uh, audio engine back to the sample engine because now we're gonna we're gonna chop this sample up right now. You can see it disappeared there. Now I can come over here under the um under the uh uh, uh sample tab. Boom. And I can say, okay, now I want to slice. You can do it multiple ways. I can say, okay, detect. Boom. And now it automatically detected those transients that was scratched to my project tempo. Or you can say, then you can turn down the sensitivity. Boom, 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 boom. Now it's just picking up all the big transients. So I can come right. Now, if, I, if I'm good with those chops and I like those chops, all you got to do is come over here and hit apply. Boom. And I want to come over here and add it to a totally different group. So I'm going to choose group D1. And then I hit uh, not single. Hit OK. And what it did was it took all of those chops, hit shift and clear, and it added it. All right, so now I have all of my uh, my sample from this this sample over here, this this uh this this sample that I added. I have it uh, spread out over uh, the sixteen pads in a totally different group. So now I have a different group with all my samples. Right now, what I can do is from there, I can go here, hit uh, events, no, hit a select, hit select all. Now, when I have it select all, anything that I change with just one of these samples will affect all of these chops so for example i can come in here go back to sound and i can say okay i want to change that to legato and i want to take this and i want to change the choke group so boom go right here oh, boom right here and i want to change this choke group and make all of these in choke group one that means choke group one means that whenever i i um whenever i hit one of these pads it cuts off the other one so if i hit this one when i hit the next one it cuts off so adding a choke group on your machine choke group putting all of these in choke group one will will cut off the sample that that is uh previously been played i hope that makes sense hope you guys are following me uh but it all makes sense once we figure, once we uh, start actually playing it. You can see that it doesn't overlap, and the samples don't don't really um, uh, really go over each other. You can change that a little bit by changing the polyphonic settings, voicing settings over here. I like to um, uplift me. I don't know. Why I said polyphono. 
Uh, I guess you could say a polyphono. Um, but anyway, so boom, I changed that to one. And what that is, it, it'll kind of linger out. Now we're gonna we're gonna play the uh, you hear? It? Got the got the metronome going. Now to record that, all I gotta do is hit shift and record in. So it didn't loop perfectly because I got the linked over here to four bar. I mean to five instead of four bar. So now when I play this back, all this should be linked perfect. I mean loop perfectly. <laughs> Now you can hear how everything is in time, and it wouldn't have been it, it would have been that way if I would have chopped it to the uh, chopped the sample up to the grid and then kind of changed my BPM that way. But I prefer this method because it allows me to literally okay, say I, I got a sample that I dragged in. I know that I want to produce this sample this this project at one one twenty eight BPM. If you know that the BPM you want to you want to chop the sample in. Doing it this way and and scratching the tempo out and changing the, the 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 sample to the tempo or even knowing the tempo and then scratching it and bringing it back in will allow you to have literally control and your your sample will be in time and everything all your chops will be pretty much perfect. So that is my method on chopping samples inside a machine. We started off with this right here, this sample. Let me go back over here to files. What was it? It was 128. I know that. And this is our sample that we started, started off with. Now, that's the sample we started off with. And this is what we have. And that is how I chop samples inside the machine plus. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much it. That is the number one way that I really prefer to sample inside a machine. There are other ways that people like to do it. There's softwares like Serato Sample. I'm probably gonna do a video on how to utilize Serato Sample. A lot of producers utilize Serato Sample, which is a third-party plugin to, to chop up samples inside the machine plus. And I'll do a video on that and um, post it a little bit later this week. But um, I think that that is the best method for me that I found in order to chop up samples, which is cr scratching that um, audio out to the project tempo and then actually chopping that up to the actual uh, um, um, project of a machine. I think that that makes it just that much better and easier. So if you found value in this video, then thank you guys for sticking it out. And I really do appreciate when y'all like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So y'all don't miss a thing. Y'all can stay up to date and follow me along this journey, which diving into the machine and learning how to become a producer. Uh, so until next time, you guys be awesome, be creative, and don't let anybody stop you from doing what it is that you want to do in life. Till next time, deuces. Oops, hit my mic. You okay, baby? Okay.